Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day. To sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Christianity is really a religion about God's grace and our gratitude. God gives, and we remember how much God gives, and we give thanks. And worship, really, is the place where we experience that grace firsthand and where we practice that basic rhythm of receiving God's goodness and giving thanks for it. So as we begin today, we begin with the words of the psalmist who said, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Let us come together today to remember God's goodness and to give thanks. Let us pray. Please be seated. Holy God, you are the source and the giver of all good things. All good things are sent from you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rain and sun, day and night, springtime and harvest, justice and mercy, bread to the eater and seed to the sower, peace to the old and energy to the young, and love to make our hearts glad. We celebrate you, generous God, the giver of all good gifts, who even gave your Son, Jesus, for us. By his cross and resurrection, you have saved and redeemed us. You give us so many good gifts, O oh God. We are those who receive from you. You give, and often we take. We take from you, day by day, our daily bread. We take all that we need that you supply. We take and receive in gratitude and wonder and joy. But then we sometimes take more. We take more than we need. We take more even than you give us. We sometimes take from our brothers and sisters, take from the poor and the weak. 
Take, because we're frightened and greedy even. Take, because we're anxious and afraid and think we need more to be secure. We take, because we are driven and sometimes so uncaring of others' needs. In our worship today, come again with your great blessing. Come again with your great deep peace to undo our fear and thus end our greed. Help us to remember again that our security is not in what we have, but it's in you, saving God. Give us a sense of your goodness and well-being that is beyond our anxiety and so end our fear. Give us a sense of your abundance that is beyond our drivenness. And you can end our uncaring and allow us to better see the ones around us that you are asking us to bless. As you bless us, we give thanks and we share with others and give. And so in our worship and through this coming week, we pray that you would turn our taking into giving since we are made in your generous, gracious, giving image. Make us generous like you, triune God, receiving gladly your blessing and giving generously to others, giving in abundance, giving in joy, learning from Jesus, the one who set this table with his very life for us. In him we pray, amen. Although sometimes it can seem like our sins and our failures are like the many grains of sand on a beach, we remember that the steadfast love of God is really like the mighty mountains, unwavering for us. And in Jesus Christ, we receive his goodness, we receive his grace, and we receive his salvation and we give thanks. Friends, believe this good news that in Jesus Christ, we are indeed forgiven and given new life. Let us give thanks with our worship today. And welcome. Good to have you here at Oak Ridge Church today. We're glad that you're joining us, whether it is here in the sanctuary or those who are joining us online as well. We're happy to welcome you on this Gratitude Sunday. Today is the beginning of our Together in Faith campaign, which is setting out to, at the primary goal of it is to pay off our mortgage. And so through this next month, we will be considering uh, this campaign and God's goodness, and we'll be embarking on a season of prayer, really, because we'll be praying that prayer to say, God, what do you want to do through me? And so today we begin that with an exercise in gratitude. And uh, today you were given a leaf when you came in today. And I'm going to remind you about that leaf later in the service. And what we're going to do in, as part of the sermon today, I'm going to have you uh, think about what you're grateful for here through the ministry of Oak Ridge Church and just write it on that leaf. So if you're wondering what's going to happen with that, uh, we'll be drawing on that and then you'll be putting it in the offering plate later uh, as an as a act of worship uh, to God. Well, let's continue at, in our worship today by singing. Say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I 
I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Good morning, everybody. Please pray the prayer of illumination with me. Gracious God, as we listen for your voice in Scripture, increase our understanding by the power of your Spirit. Shape our everyday living with your good news and inspire us in faith and service. Through Christ, your living word. Amen. And today's reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out to him, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, we're not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, Get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. These are the words of the Lord. Let's be to God. It was at the 24th Emmy Awards that children's TV host Fred Rogers was called to the stage to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. Maybe you saw it. There were no doubt people in the crowd who thought this is going to be a light moment in the midst of this shiny, glitzy Hollywood star crowd. But by the time that Rogers was finished that night, there was not a dry eye in the place. So take a look. See if maybe you remember this. Oh, it's a beautiful night in this neighborhood. <laughs> so many people have helped me to come to this night. Some of you are here. Some are far away. Some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take, along with me, 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are? Those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. 
10 seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. You know, they're the kind of people television does well to offer our world. Special thanks to my family and friends and to my coworkers in public broadcasting, family communications, and this academy for encouraging me allowing me all these years to be your neighbor. May God be with you. Thank you very much. If you had asked the same question to that Samaritan leper, I'm sure that the answer for the rest of his life would have been, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because the worst thing about being a leper, as you may know, is often not just the disease itself, but it's the ostracism and the exclusion that goes along with it. The law of Israel actually, even in Numbers, it says this, command the Israelites to put out of the camp everyone who is leprous. So to be a leper was not only to suffer with physical illness, but it was also to be excluded. It was to lose your family, to lose your livelihood, and to be excluded from society, really. And so our Samaritan leper that we hear about today is also excluded. He's doubly excluded because he's a Samaritan. You know, he's an, a hated outsider who is despised. As Jesus is walking along that day and these ten lepers approach him, they cry out to him saying, Jesus, have mercy on us. But it's interesting in the story that Jesus doesn't just immediately heal them as he often does in some other situations. Instead, he tells them to go and present themselves to the priests because they're the only ones that can give them their life back again and say that they're clean. It's interesting that even though they look at their skin when Jesus says that and there is no difference, they are not healed, they still trust Jesus. They have faith in Him enough to be able to obey His Word to them, and they go. And it's as they go along that they are healed. I want you just to, to try to imagine how that unfolded. You know, this group of ten lepers that start out on this journey, they are still leprous, but as they go, imagine what it looked like when the first one suddenly looked down and saw that their skin was being made whole. Just imagine what that must have been like as it rippled through that ten lepers. Well, there's one guy among those ten, the guy who is really the outsider among even the ten, that Samaritan leper who just goes crazy with gratitude. And I think sometimes we can miss that in the story, but he goes crazy with gratitude. He is singing and shouting and praying, and he's letting everybody know how grateful he is. And he wheels around, and the next thing you know, he is coming before Jesus, and he is excited. He is so happy. You can't contain the gratitude that he feels. He just shows us what gratitude looks like, and he falls at Jesus' feet. And you can imagine him, tears flowing down his cheeks, saying, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jesus, thank you, thank you, I'll be uh, eternally grateful to you. And then Jesus says, get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. 
Now, one thing that I learned this week that I didn't know before was that that word, get up, actually is the same word that is connected with Jesus getting up from the tomb. It, it's connected with the resurrection, which is interesting, especially in this 50 days of Easter for us. So really, what Jesus is trying to say here is that he was dead, but now he is alive again. He's been born again. His eyes have been opened. And this is kind of a moment of salvation for him. And he is so, so grateful. He can see that there is an, a life for him. And he's wanting to say thank you. He's the kind of person that if the offering plate was pla passed, he was here today in our midst, he would just want to crawl right into the offering plate and just give his old self to Jesus because he is so grateful for the new life that he has given him. Christianity, as I said at the beginning, is a religion of God's grace and our gratitude. God gives, and we say thank you. From Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, represented by this table, the gifts kind of ripple out. God is the giver of all good things. Every mouthful of food that we will eat today, every breath of air that we take today, every note of music that we hear today, every smile on the face of another today, this and a million other things that we could take time just to start naming in our midst. Who needs thanksgiving to be thankful? Because we are the people of God who remember every week, every day, God gives and we give thanks. We are called to remember, to be people who remember. And maybe that's why our table underneath this cloth today says, this do in remembrance of me. We are people who remember. Well, we try. Gratitude begins maybe with a child, you know, maybe the way that we learn to say thank you, you know, when our parent hands us a cookie and what do they say? What do you say? <laughs> and then if they don't say it, you say, say thank you, right? <laughs> we learn how to say thank you right from an early age. When we stop before every meal and we say a grace, we recognize at that moment, God gives and I receive. We are blessed. We say thank you. And our worship every week is meant to train us in gratitude. The table is in different traditions of the church called different things. It's in, often in Anglican and Catholic traditions, it's called the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. And so the table is the visible sign of us giving thanks for Jesus' gift of salvation and new life. I don't know about you, but I find that there's something in my lower nature, though, that sometimes prefers to dwell on the negative instead of the positives. Does that ever happen to you? You know, there could be like five or ten really great things that happen in the run of a day, but what one stays with me? It's that one thing that didn't quite go the way I'd hoped, the one thing that went south. 
You know, sometimes we have this propensity to zero in on that, on the problem, the annoyance, on the imperfections, a bit maybe like this mythical farmer who, who said that he had chick, six chicks that hatched, and then he griped, yeah, they all died on me except for five. The other thing that we struggle with here in North America, living in North American consumerism, and you've heard me say this before, is that we are constantly being trained in dissatisfaction, right? That I don't have enough, that that then leads to I am not enough, and then that leads to I am not good enough. This is the progression of consumerism in our midst. And Canadian spiritual writer Mary Jo Letty says that the way that works is on the way to getting more, we actually step over the, the good things that we already have, and sometimes we even miss them. We fail to even recognize how blessed we have been sometimes. We dismiss the good sometimes that we do because we think it should have been better. The dissatisfaction even then with ourselves, with others, even with our church and the world is only possible as this mode of taking things for granted becomes a habit of being. And so, in order to be God's people, to recognize that we're blessed and to give thanks, we have to work against this other current in our life of ingratitude that's always being cultivated by the culture that we live in. in ingratitude really is the way that sin takes shape in us, and it can hold us captive and often to the negatives. Our fixation sometimes, even in a society like this that has so many good things and benefits, it can lead us to forget. It can cause us to be blind to all that we've received, all of God's myriad good gifts. Well, this seems to be uh, something that even the secular world around us recognizes, and so there was one British Columbia newspaper who decided to do something about it, and they ran um, a particular list to try to wake people up to gratitude. And here was the list. I think it's always good for us to hear about this. They said, if you woke up this morning with more health than illness, then you are more fortunate than one million people who will not survive this week. If you have food in the refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof overhead, and a place to sleep, then you are richer than 75% of the world. If you can attend a church or political meeting without fear or harassment, arrest, torture, or death, then you are more blessed than three billion people in the world. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, or spare change in your pocket, then you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. Well, there's a deep spirit of gratitude that is flowing out of that Samaritan leper in today's gospel lesson. He's discovered what holds the key to a new kind of living. We worship because we hardly know how to say thank you for the many good things that we have received in our lives. And most of them are unearned, beyond our control, and given to us for free. Our life, our life itself, the beauty of a wonderful world, to live in a place of opportunity and abundance. 
we worship because we have this sense of being blessed. And when we worship, that sense of being blessed just deepens. And when we realize how much we've been given, a life, a beginning, even our cross-shaped forgiveness, and a place at this table of God's kingdom, we move almost naturally to want to respond, to give, to give away some of our things, our time, our talents, and actually we become happier and healthier. Do you know they say that, that if there's one virtue who could, that could improve your personal health, it would be gratitude. And there's actually been more scientific study of gratitude lately. And one study showed that in a two-month period of folks with heart disease who started to keep a gratitude journal regularly over that time, that even two months of doing that improved their heart health. Gratitude is something that has the power to change us. That's how God made us. And this natural move to want to give away helps to, to undermine the ingratitude of the culture that we live in. Because in giving away, the craving that holds us captive begins to loosen its grip on us. As Letty says, a given life is very different from a driven life. And that's worth remembering. A given life is very different from a driven life. Because gratitude renews itself. As more is given, more is received. Kay was an ordinary woman. She lived alone in an ordinary house in our town. She loved getting out to weekly worship and to choir practice, which some of her family who lived a few hours away thought that that was amusing because they said, Kay's not a singer. Why is she in the choir? Well, Kay enjoyed getting a drive with Dorothy every week who was in the choir. And even though there were other people who lived closer to Kay, she wanted to drive with Dorothy. And on those drives, they would talk. And quite out of the blue, one night, Kay said to Dorothy, I want to do something for the church. And right before Dorothy's eyes and ears that night, Kay broke open her savings, and she told Dorothy that she was going to set up an insurance policy for the church, which at her death would give the gift of $100,000 to the ministry of the church. Dorothy, who happened to be the treasurer of the church, was absolutely dumbfounded. She couldn't believe it. This was a church plant, and this $100,000 was a stupendous gift. But the next thing that Kay said to Dorothy in the car that night was, and you will tell no one, not even Tim. No one will know about this. And so shortly after that, Kay began to give the church $500 a month to pay that insurance premium. And in return, Kay then received a yearly donation receipt from contributions. And it was about a decade later that Kay died, and the congregation was dumbfounded. They received a gift of $103,000 that came just at God's timing for that church plant. Some were so surprised that this extravagant gift came from an ordinary widow, yet Dorothy knew that this exuberant act of genuine gratitude came from wanting to say thank you. On one of those drives home, on a Wednesday night, 
Kay had said quietly to Dorothy, I have more friends now than I have ever had before in my whole life. I just want to say thank you. Kay, like that Samaritan leper, wanted to be able to say thank you to Jesus for that gift. You could say that gratitude is a way of preaching the gospel to ourselves because it really reveals the true character of God at work in our lives. God gives, we receive and give thanks. It helps in turn to build a confidence in us even when the future can be unknown. The most important thing we know, even though the future can be unknown, is that we know God and that God gives and that we are blessed and receive. Gratitude helps us to have more and more confidence in the steadfast love and the mercy of God the Father. As Psalm 100 says, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. So, on this Gratitude Sunday at the beginning of our Together in Faith campaign, let's practice this of being aware of God's blessing to us and giving thanks. And so today I want us to specifically think about the ministry of Oak Ridge Church. How have you personally been blessed by the ministry of Oak Ridge Church? How has God used this congregation to bless you? Think of one or two or three words that you could write down on that leaf that you were given. And we are going to add it to the gratitude tree that is outside the sanctuary. And already our youth and kids have added their leaves, and you can take a look at the kind of things that they are thankful for. And what I'm going to invite you to do today is to add your oak leaves uh, to that beautiful gratitude tree that Sonia made for us this week and to give thanks uh, to God. So Laura is going to play for a few minutes, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray, discern, and just write down two or three words that represent how God has given uh, to you through the ministry of Oak Ridge Church. And then I'll introduce the offering, and when the offering plates are passed, I'll invite you to put your leaf in with your offering today and dedicate it to God. God gives, and we are called to remember and give thanks, and it's out of that sense of thanksgiving that we dedicate our offerings and our gratitude leaves today by placing them in the offering plate and giving them to God. Our morning tithes and, and offerings will be received along with your gratitude leaves.
Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, you give and we receive and give thanks. We thank you for the grace of Jesus Christ and his cross. We thank you for his overcoming of sin and death and raising us to new life. Could we come today thankful, thankful at seeing new life burst forth around us. Thank you for, for placing us in such a fertile part of your world. We offer our gifts today, and we offer these paper leaves in gratitude for all that we receive from your hand, and especially from this community of faith, Oak Ridge Presbyterian in London. We pray that you would bless and multiply the gifts that we bring today, just as Jesus multiplied a few loaves and fish to bless others. So we pray that you would use what we bring today to bless others so that they can taste your love and mercy in our city, in our world, through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west and north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of heaven. And this is the table of our Lord. And he invites all those who trust him to come and to be fed by him. Let us rejoice. Let us sing together. Please be seated. This is the table of thanksgiving. It was on the night of Jesus' betrayal that he took bread and blessing it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup at that Passover celebration, and he said, this cup is the new covenant, the new relationship with God, which is sealed through my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Every time we take this bread, we take this cup, it's a mirror of the cross. It brings us right to the cross. And again, Jesus offers himself so that we can be forgiven, that our sin can be taken away, and we can find new life in him. Come, this is the table to receive the new life of Christ. Let us give thanks. Let us pray. We are not self-made people, O oh Lord. Every day, we live out of amazing giftedness that comes from your unending, amazing grace. Give us open eyes to be more aware every day of all the ways that you are providing for us, whether it's even as basic as the good food on our table, or whether it's the provision of love that you give to us through family and friends and a faith community like Oak Ridge, or whether it's in the everydayness of warm homes, of beds to sleep in, of a good education, of meaningful work and service, and a country that is far from broken, a country of much freedom and justice. But most especially, we thank you today for Jesus Christ, who redeems us from sin and death and raises us to new life. Help us to count our giftedness every day so that we might joyfully be more aware of your goodness, O oh God, and trust you more for even a future that is unknown. Open our eyes as well to those seeds of greed in us and in, even in our life together as a congregation and a nation Keep us mindful and alert to the way that greed can make everything about ourselves. It can even make our ministry all about us and our congregation. Or even within our country, everything can be just about us. Refresh us in the vision of gospel love that comes to us in Christ that is able to erase all of those dividing lines and enables us through confident faith to see beyond ourselves and our immediate needs that we might be willing to place the needs of others even before our own as you have for us lord jesus in your cross help us to follow you lord by setting the table with our lives as you have shown us in setting this one with yours. Help us to see all that we've been given, those resources that we've been given, not as security, but as reminders of your generosity and as opportunity to be able to share grace with others and become a source of blessing for others as you bless us. Make us part of your dream of sharing abundance in the world. And in so doing, may we discover the joy of a given life instead of merely a driven life and take hold of the life that's really life in you. Today, we remember those in our community of faith and in our world who are faith facing challenges. Especially, we remember those who are faith facing health challenges or difficult times for any reason. Especially today, we remember Bill. Ask you to strengthen him in these days, 
Surround him with your goodness and peace. We also pray for families and friends who are under stress or those who are in sorrow. And especially today, we pray for Pastor Jay Wan's family, especially his wife, Yuna, and their two sons as they grieve the loss of a father and a husband. We ask you to bless their whole family with comfort and bless others whom we name now in this silence. Make us generous in compassion and understanding for others, just as you, Lord Jesus, are compassionate. And as we come to this table of mercy, Holy Spirit, come now and settle on us and on these good gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us Christ's body and lifeblood, healing, forgiving, and making us whole. And so may we become Christ's body, the church, loving and caring throughout the whole world until that day when all creation will feast with you in the fullness of your mercy and peace. And we pray together in the name of our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks.
Let us pray. Loving God, Christ our Lord and Holy Spirit, you have nourished us, body and soul, in this meal. We have heard your love, so send us out to speak it. We have seen your love, so send us out to show it. And we have been fed by your love, so send us out to share it. And let us all and let all things be done for your glory. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome you to worship here at Oak Ridge Church today. We're so glad that you're able to be with us uh, in worship today. And at the beginning of our Together in Faith campaign, I hope that you'll take a minute after worship to just take a walk by our gratitude tree. And uh, your leaves have now been received and dedicated, and we will work to get those posted on our tree. And it's a beautiful oak tree that we have in our narthex out there. And take a look at the things that our youth and kids identified as the things that they felt were blessings that come to them through the ministry of Oak Ridge Church. And as a way to help guide us through this season of prayer that we're in, when we're praying, how do you want to use me, Lord? Um, we have a gratitude journal uh, that we have produced, uh, and it's produced by Horizon, which is our, our coach for this campaign that we're in. And uh, we're going to have these available for everyone today at the door, and what it gives you is a daily devotional. And I know that many of you have a daily practice already, and this is something that you might even be able to add at a different part of the day, you know, whether it's at a meal together or whether it's at the end of your day. And uh, uh, it's just a reflection and, and prayer for each day to guide us through this season of prayer here at Oak Ridge. So there'll be ushers uh, who will give you one of these on your way out. And if you need one to take or give away to someone else, just ask them for another one as well. I was going to also uh, ask... Uh, Sonia to come forward and to give a couple of announcements about kids' ministry things here as well. Not used to not having my little perch here, so I have to stand on my toes. Um, just to let you know that um, you don't want to miss out on kids' camp. Uh, we are almost three quarters of the way full now. We're about 75% full. We're going to have some opportunities to sponsor some more children from the London Chaplaincy, which takes care of um, Southdale and Limberloss units. Uh, so keep your eye out on that. I will announce that when I get final numbers in as well. The other announcement we're going to make is we have um, Culture Shock coming up April 26th. There are 13 com... Oh, we didn't adjust the slide. Okay, so we actually have 13 countries now. There's... We're missing Malawi, South Africa, and Bosnia. Okay, so if you would like to host a country, please come and see me, and we will get your um, name on there. Uh, it's very easy. You just have to cook food. It's food and people. So it's not a lot of work. It's just food and people. Come out, um, purchase some tickets for your friends as well, and um, just come and have a fun time. Thanks. As you will know, uh, we have a new custodian here at Oak Ridge Church, and uh, recently we had uh, marked Lawrence's retirement, and Lawrence has been very kind to us and helped us through this season of transition, but Lawrence is finally getting his retirement from Oak Ridge Church. Uh, we, we have a new custodian in, in place, and his name is Rad, and he's been working for us for two weeks now, as Lawrence kind of orients him. And Rad is here this morning with us, and we invite you to stand, Rad. <laughs> Rad is already doing a great job in our midst, and we are so happy to welcome you, Rad, uh, to this church family as well, and we're grateful uh, to, for the contribution uh, that you are already making here at Oak Ridge, and we look forward to your time with us. So blessings on you at this time of beginning. I wanted to mention as well on a sad note uh, that over the weekend, uh, some of you will know uh, Pastor J. Wan Chang, who has been connected with our congregation here at Oak Ridge, and he passed away on Friday. 
And so I would ask you to continue to, to remember um, his wife, Yuna, and uh, their, their two sons as well, as well as his extended family. Uh, they're, they're going to be traveling or have traveled at quite an extensive distance to be here. And we're going to uh, have a funeral service here Saturday at 9.30 here at Oak Ridge. And it'll be a significantly bilingual service that will be live streamed. And so there'll be people joining us from Korea uh, through live stream for that service as well. And so that's this uh, Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, Saturday at 9.30 uh, here at Oak Ridge Church, followed by a reception in the upper room. And I wanted to remind you as well that for anybody who needs prayer support, we have restarted the prayer room, and just a reminder that it's available every Sunday. I know there was one Sunday where there was a bit of a lineup, and there were about six people, so we apologize for, for you having to wait that day. But the, there are two people that are there waiting following the service. If you have something that you would really like to confidentially have prayed about uh, with other people, they're there waiting in uh, Jan Bracken's office for you, which is in the office wing, uh, just beyond the narthex through uh, that, that room uh, with the open table there. And there's someone there who would be happy to pray with you. Let's prepare to go forth into the world to serve Christ and to be aware of God's blessings in the world and to give thanks always. Let us sing.
let us go forth remembering that our life together is really about God's grace and our gratitude. God's grace and our gratitude, giving thanks not only in this place, but in all the places we go forth to now. And may God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as you go forth to find the life that's really life in Him. Amen.